I did an episode on a guy named Carl Tanzler who uh, got obsessed with this lady that died of tuberculosis and then he slept with her corpse for 30 years. He stole her body from the graveyard. But the thing <laughs> that they don't tell you about gay clubs in the bathroom in that place was like Mad Max, man. You know that dude playing the guitar that shoots <laughs> the f***ing flames? Right. In the front? That's like the right. bathroom of a gay club. <laughs> like the, 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 him being chased <laughs> through the f***. Yeah, there's a guy with a ball gag. I'm, I walk over and I'm yeah. over the shower stall. I don't like the way you talk to me in front of your friends. Baby, please. Oh, shit. Baby, please. And I we, listen, everybody in there, humiliated for this guy. So Chase and Kent. Yeah. Okay. And you guys do a, a podcast together. We just work for the same company and we do a lot of projects together, but we, he has his thing and I have my thing. And occasionally I go down, down on him or like whatever he, he needs. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just friends. Ooh, ooh. Okay, that <laughs> went sideways. That went bad. That's... No, we don't. We, we have a separate podcast. We're just under the same company. Okay. Yeah. Can I let me do my intro, please? Let me just do this. Okay. Hey, this is Matt Cox. We're here at Podfest. No. Fuck all. What'd I say? <laughs> Where are we? It's fucking close enough, huh? Crime Con? Hey, <laughs> hey, this is Matt Cox. We're here at Crime Con and we are with, I'm going to say, True Crime Ken. That's it. And Jimmy. So that's close as shit. Yeah. Or what Chase. Chase. Yeah. Chase. <laughs> this is the first crime con we've done, but we've done Horror Hound uh, before, which is like a horror convention. Uh, and I'm from Kentucky, so I've got to be very careful with how horror. It's a horror convention. Okay. Um, we're still work trying to get our way into the horror conventions. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's like mainly like for movies, Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, and stuff. So we've done that a few times. This is our first crime con. Crime con's a little expensive. But um, so you yeah, we we go out and do that, get the booth, and oh, okay, sell merch, or whatever. Okay, for for your own, just for your own. Eleven fifty nine. Um, and the owner of eleven fifty nine, his name is Sam Swenson. He's also there, but he had to somebody had to stay at the booth, so he's at right. the booth. Um, and yeah, we just have fun, make podcasts, and shoot okay. the shit. What What did you do before, like before you started the podcast? I did a lot of things. I did uh. <laughs> What can you talk about? Uh, I was in the Marine Corps for five years. Um, I was in corrections for three years. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> he told me a little yeah. bit on the way here. Yeah. I mean, we were the only difference in us was the side of the door we were standing on, I think. It's no different. It's no different. <laughs> I always said, man, the only difference, even when I worked there, the only difference in me holding this key and them was one mistake. It's so all it takes is one mistake. But I did that for a long time while I was in college. And then after I got out of college, I got into uh, doing tool and die, like a machinist. And in the meantime, like I was just making like dick jokes on Facebook and like just a penny. stupid childish jokes. And a big podcaster named Jack Luna, who has a podcast called Dark Topic, and he's now working with Generation Wise Aaron, um, friended me or I friended him because I was a big fan of his show. And I guess me just fucking around on Facebook, like, caught his eye. And at the time, he worked for 1159 Media, and I got a message from him one day, and I'm just a machinist. And he's like, hey, we're wanting to do a comedy true crime show, and we need a host. He said, good for you. And I want you to host it. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, it was a, for me, you know, that was like Brad Pitt reaching out, because yeah. I was such a big fan of his of his right. show. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And uh, fast forward, that was three years ago. And now it's all I do. So how is it? Is it all through like, uh, do you do it through StreamYard? Do you guys actually have a studio or it's, I don't know. it's all remote? How do we do? Squadcast. <laughs> Squadcast. So yeah, we. I don't know. I feel like a lot of things that fall in your lap. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> yeah, they, things I'm, are just I'm like fucking Forrest Gump. Things are just yeah. happening to you and you're like. <laughs> Yeah. What? You want me to look after some criminals? Sure. Yeah. I can do that. Next thing I know, I'm on America's Most Wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so okay, so well what what is the what's the what is it? What's the show? Uh True Crime Kent is I try to find cases where there's already like a, a comedic aspect to the crime. That's not always the case. Um <laughs> we do we also damn, cover these cases damn like murderers. child murderers. It's like <laughs> damn it. There's not a lot of comedy fruit that's ripe for the pick in there, you know? But I try to find it. And 
but I try to, for the most part, find cases where there's like, there's like a, it's already got like a funny edge to it. Like, for example, I did an episode on a guy named Carl Tanzler who uh, got obsessed with this lady that died of tuberculosis and then he slept with her corpse for 30 years. He stole her body from the graveyard, shoved its vagine uh, full of papers and made basically a corpse flashlight. <laughs> Colby thought Colby's like this corpse for like 30 years and he was just nothing in it. And Colby's um, like, there goes the monetization. And but, uh it was wild. But <laughs> as you can see, that's really funny. So <laughs> okay. it was just a rot for comedy. The whole the whole thing was. So or the Iron Mike Malloy, I did an episode on him, and he was a uh Irish immigrant that immigrated to New York, and these these thugs like took out an insurance policy on him and tried to kill him in every way possible. And like, he just wouldn't die, but he never also caught on that they were trying to kill him. So it was like a Looney Tunes episode <laughs> and it's all true stories. And I just do these like deep dives into these cases um, and just have a good time. It's like not politically correct or, but I try, I, I do take a lot of pride in the research. Right. Yeah. So, as you what, can tell, yeah, <laughs> I think that's obvious. Um, oh man, uh, why? So, why don't you guys do it on uh, YouTube? Well, mainly with my show for the reason you just said. Oh yeah, the month. Yeah, yeah, that that it might be an issue. Uh, I don't like being. I don't like being censored. I don't. Right. I, I'm super pro freedom of speech and all that stuff, and. Uh, I've even turned down ads, monetized ads, because they want to control how I how I do the ad. Right. So uh, I'm super against somebody telling me what I can and can't say. I wish I could be principled like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it, man. It's like, um, and that's why I've pretty much not done anything on YouTube so far. There's some of the episodes are on YouTube, but they're just in audio form. And if they get striked or taken down, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm like, they're not, I don't even know if they're, mo are they monetized? I don't think so. Not that I, know. I don't even know that people know they're on YouTube. I didn't know they were on YouTube, so. Right. And that's it. Well, how'd you get into podcasting? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get to them. Okay. But thank you. <laughs> I just feel like I'm talking too much. <laughs> so whereas they approached him to do a show, I approached them about doing a show. So I made a pilot episode. I sent it in and the owner thought it was Good enough. So he, <laughs> good uh, enough. That good was enough. that the email. Yeah. Good, enough. good enough. Not great. Yeah. So so I just I did every, so I do all my own research, all my own recording, all my own editing. I actually edit almost all of the other shows now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, man. No, you're good. <laughs> so I, I do all the editing, and yeah, it's just all audio right now. I wouldn't even know what the hell I was doing with the video editing. So it's... I do all the easy stuff. He's like the serious guy. His shows are serious. They're yeah, not like are more serious, and then they're on the more on the comedic spectrum. Right. Just what? Do, what? What do you? I mean, what um, topics have you gone over? Like cases. So with almost fiction, I just did one. My newest episode. This release is on uh, about Marvin Gale Gray. He was a guy who got arrested, and then while in prison, got super into powerlifting. So, I mean, at one point he was like 30 pounds off the world record for squat and he did it all in jail, eating jail food. So, I mean, this dude was just a monster. Right. And then just one of the, but every time he got out of jail, he killed someone and went back to jail. And for some reason, even though he killed someone, he got out again. He murdered a lady, got 15 years, did his time, got back out and then murdered someone else. And so, um, like Kent, I like to do deep dives on the research or I'll read multiple books and it's amazing how many times you'll find out just how much conflicting evidence. There yeah. Is. That comes, happens a lot. And so you'll have one person say, Oh, he did this and killed this person. And then I'll read something else that says, Oh, that person just went to the hospital for three days. And you're just like, well, that's a big difference. Right. And so it's just, there's a lot of podcasts. I think that kind of read Wikipedia, maybe read one or two articles online and then they write an episode and kick it out you know ever you ever interview the guy or um no because some of the guys that i do podcasts on are already deceased right it's so like marvin gail gray um he died of heart failure in prison and so like i just did another episode it was the last guy who died in the electric chair in connecticut um so it's just like some of the people that i do these podcasts on they 
are already deceased. Some of them. It's hard to get an interview if they're deceased. Yeah. And so like, or like I did an episode that took place in Italy in like the thirties. So it's just like some things, it's just not really feasible to get an interview with anyone who's even still alive that knows anything about the case. So. How long have you been doing it? So I have been doing it full time for eight months. Okay. So that's yeah, full time eight months. <laughs> What's your favorite one that you've gone over? My favorite one I've gone over was oh, now I'm on the spot. I can't remember her last name. There was this lady named Michelle, and she was just psychotic. She pretended to be like this perfect woman in every aspect of her life, and yet behind the scenes, she was like offering people a place to stay, then she would imprison them, torture them, and kill them. And her kids were there the whole time. And so it's just like, there's just certain things that you read that you're like, this can't be real. And so it's like, that's part of the reason why my podcast name is Almost Fiction. Cause it's like, there's some things you read that you're like, this can't have happened in real life, but it did. And so it's just, just the craziness that we're surrounded by every day that we don't even know about. Right. How long are the, are, is this, do you break them up in different pieces? Um, it just depends. Like pieces? I've had one episode, <laughs> Sorry. I've had one episode that was a three parter and each was almost an hour long. So it's three total hours. And then I've had other episodes that it's 35 minutes. It just depends. I mean, cause I had one where this guy, I mean, he only committed one crime and that was it, but it was just insane. He kidnapped a kid. And then over the course of months, eight pieces of him and wrote it down in a cookbook. He made a cookbook on how to cook people. And he only, but he only did one person. So it's like. Tell me you wouldn't try. So I, uh, <laughs> if given the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been super pro cannibalism. And I've <laughs> said this many times and I'll die on this hill. If I'm ever in a survival situation with any of you, if we all, if this building were to collapse right now. I give all of you permission to eat me <laughs> yeah. if you have my corpse. And I will do the same to you if in the situation. Bass. <laughs> yeah, because I've just been looking for a reason, to be honest. Did you, uh, <laughs> did you ever see the movie Alive? I love that. With the hockey yeah. team and the Alps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, true, it's a true story, yeah. but I never read the book. But I always remember, you know, they, they, they waited like, weeks before they actually way longer than i would yeah have. yeah i, I was gonna say yeah. like as soon as i got a rumble like my tummy started rumbling i'd have been like i'd have been eyeballing people yeah. i sometimes <laughs> if i'm waiting in line at hardy's and they're taking too long i start looking at the thighs of the woman in front of me uh and they also ate ass first which i didn't understand because that's just mainly what? fat i would have went back strap no no, or you, thigh. No, no no you have a lot of uh, in your in your actual ass cheek you have a lot of of muscle there. really yeah i didn't know i mean that. it's I probably think, just the people i think around. Gonna say, i was gonna yeah. say <laughs> <laughs> we this probably is, hang out with different people yeah. so <laughs> um yeah that was uh that was god that was an amazing that was an insane movie um i was what i was thinking about what about that that guy wasn't it some guy or was it two guys that had like three women or four women like in their basement or something uh do you, do you remember that one that I mean, was, he kept them alive for. It, I, forever. I remember that. I can't remember the guy's name. They were prostitutes. He was targeting black prostitutes, I believe. And then he kept them. And then in he there. kept them in the basement in a box, actually, a little box in the basement. Do you remember that guy's name? I don't remember his name. And one of them got loose. That's how he got caught. Yeah, yeah. She, she got yeah. It. yeah. Was running down the street like naked. Yeah. Fine. And people were ignoring her. And then finally, someone decided to stop and help her out. <sighs> mm. I said, I can't remember for the life of me what. And then I also had an uncle. They haven't caught him yet. Yeah, though. yeah you have a vastly mouth, different. You can see yeah. that we kind of span the spectrum where I'm not as funny. <laughs> so I, if you don't have a sense of humor, listen to my podcast. But if you do, listen to his podcast. It's a lot like last podcast on the left. Um, it's basically a rip off of last podcast on yeah. the left. Let's yeah. be honest. I haven't <laughs> yours or yours. Mine. Oh, Mine. yeah. I don't know any of these podcasts. Last podcast on the left is like a massive hit. It's probably the, it is the one that started, I think, the true crime comedy genre. Okay. And I listen to it. From, what about, um, uh, what about, uh, God, my favorite murder? Even my favorite last podcast on the left was doing episodes in probably 2009, oh, something okay. like that. They've been, they are very controversial though, so they don't get. Last podcast on the left is controversial. Just a little bit. What about my favorite murder? I mean, what did, are, are they still around? They are. Yeah. They were huge. Like they, they were, were, they shot and then they, 
I don't even know. I like I haven't heard of, of in years I haven't heard anything. I think what happens is and it's probably going to happen to me too and probably him with every crime podcast is people run out of cases that they feel fits their particular podcast. Right. You know. Thankfully I'm far from that point yet. And I'm sure he is too, but I, I see that like with last podcast on the left and a couple others, they're starting to shift towards like cryptids, like uh, Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot and right. black holes and stuff. And I think it's because they feel like they've covered everything worth, not, not that every murder is horrible, but you need a certain, there's a point where an episode, where a, a topic has too much information. It's like... Because I want to include anything, I will. I will never do like a, a, an episode on Jeffrey Dahmer because there's just too much. There's like it's too much overwhelming. It'd be like a ten part series, you know. <laughs> so many dicks he ate. It was <laughs> like <laughs> that guy is so many dicks. But so this is this is gonna be a problem. <laughs> um, how long are your episodes? They range from. Between like an hour 20 and two and a half hours, but sometimes we do multi-parters, so they'll be like three-parters, but most of them are one, one-offs, one and they, they're they between like an hour and a half, two and a half hours. All right. What's yeah. your, do you have a favorite? My favorite, if I, I always tell people, it's like a christening. <laughs> we have an episode called Corpsewood Manor, and if you can make it through Corpsewood Manor, then you are going to be a listener. Because it's like, I talked about like my first gay experience and I'm not even gay, I don't think. I'm still trying to figure that shit out. I'm 36, I should get on that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be confusing. Yeah, I got three kids. Your so wife's going like, to be. I need to like, that. I, I need I'm, to work this out. Because yeah. I've got to get on that. But um, I used to go to gay clubs. Because my first wife, when I was in the Marine Corps... <laughs> it explains the first wife part. Yeah, she's probably a lesbian now. It's on the subject. But because um, <laughs> anybody's being married to me, that's usually what happens. But she was a Marine, and most of her friends were... I was a Marine, she was a Marine, and her, all her friends were Marines. And a lot of people don't know this, but like a large portion of the Marine Corps that is female, we don't talk about this a lot, are... No. Yeah. I would have never yeah. put that together. Yeah. I don't think it's surprising anybody. I don't, I don't know Not that. all of them, of course, Swat. but like a large portion, a like a really large portion. So I would just go to like gay clubs with them and we, and have fun. It was the most fun ever. At the time, I was the most fit I'd ever been in my life. Fitter than this? Oh, this is like embarrassing. I look like John Goodman. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was in good shape, so guys would buy me drinks. But the thing that they don't tell you about gay clubs is like, and the one that I used to go to all the time was called Abiza's in Wilmington, North Carolina. And the bathroom in that place was like Mad Max, man. You know that dude playing the guitar that shoots the fucking flames? <laughs> right. the front? That's like the right. bathroom of a gay club. <laughs> like he, <laughs> him being chased through the fucking... Yeah. Through. There's a guy the, with a ball gag. <laughs> There's a dude hanging from the ceiling and rubber. Like, you don't know what you're going to run into. And it was always my favorite part going to the bathroom because you, like, never know what you're going to see. And I'm just a small-town Christian boy. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> it's like it's like going to the restroom at the in the low-security prison after uh, after count. Exactly. Like, after lights off. It's like I, I would go and piss just before – take a piss just before count because when – if they count and they go lights off and they shut the lights off and I think God I I and if if it's two in the morning I had to go to the bathroom I'd be like I'm gonna hold it I'm just because you don't know <laughs> what you're gonna you go in, in on you don't know what you're gonna walk into I mean to me I would walk in looking at the floor go straight to the urinal go to the bathroom no matter what noises I heard no matter what, I turn back around walk out I don't need to wash my hands keep walking <laughs> see you approach it differently this is me <laughs> I'm trying to take it all what in. are y'all doing in there <laughs> why are there four feet in there. <laughs> Well, that's what <laughs> happened, actually, is I went to the urinal and there were two dudes like I could hear a ball slap, a ball sack <laughs> slapping the back of another ball sack <laughs> like three foot from where I was pissing. And I was looking at the wall and I'm just hearing this like and they were like, really, he was really letting them have it. <laughs> oh <my. sighs> you know, those like donuts <laughs> that 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 trucker set on because they got hemorrhoids. Yes. This guy definitely had to use one of those the next day because he was getting turned out. 
And <laughs> I, mean, I thought if was, he was in that position, I think he's already turned. He out. was, yeah, yeah. And which is you know good just for him, man. I'm all for it if that's what you're into. But I was looking at the wall <laughs> of the urinal and pissing, and this guy's just rearranging this fella's insides. And uh, I was thinking about like getting baptized whenever I was 13, and. <laughs> Growing up in a Christian town, I was very conservative. I was raised conservative. My stepfather's a preacher, and it was like, if they could just see me now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've come a long way, come a long way. And then my buddy, my buddy who I did the show with, his gay experience was getting molested in a tent while he was camping. <laughs> so we roasted him. We roasted him for like 20 minutes for getting molested. Um, we just really let him have it, and worse than the tent experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Us roasting him for his trauma was probably worse than the trauma itself. I was gonna- <laughs> and uh, you're a good friend. He's a great. Yeah, I'm a good. I'm a pretty good dude. I need to figure out the gay thing though. Um, <laughs> but I, if you can get through that, and then the and the reason we talk about that is because in the beginning of the episode is because the crime involved too gay dudes that were just living their lives not bothering anybody in this like backwoods town in arkansas in the woods and fucking just living their lives and they got brutally murdered by these like rednecks so it's kind of you know it was bad a horrible crime that (laughs) and um but they lived in a castle so that was the funny part (laughs) but not like a like a typical castle it was like oh like if you ordered a castle on wish it was like a shitty castle because they're gay and they built the castle themselves and they're great at interior decoration, but like not <laughs> not masonry structural. Work. Yeah, like not they're not bricklayers. <laughs> the curtains were fucking great though. They have beautiful curtains, but uh and they just got murdered by these by these inbred rednecks. And it was a horrible story. But I always say, so Corpsewood Manor. If you're gonna try true crime Kent, Corpsewood Manor. That's where it's at. So I have a uh prison story um the in the the restrooms when you walk into the restroom in the, the in a low security prison low security prisons don't have typically don't have like a door on the cell right yeah so uh and and, and so you don't have a bathroom in your in your cell it's a it's a group bathroom right it's, it's a they're called dorm they're it's a big dorm and you have like a, a bathroom it'd be like a public bathroom well when you walk in of course typically you walk in and then there's a whole bunch of sinks and then you walk a little bit further in and there's urinals and um you know the whatever you call them the the toilets with the the stalls thank you but to the right there's all the shower stalls so i remember so one time i'm in there taking a shower so i'm taking a shower and i hear these guys talking and there is two gay guys yeah and the one gay guy goes oh my god squeeze it (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm watching, and I thought, oh, Christ. And I'm trying, I'm like, I need to get out of here. I'm doing my hamstring, you know, we're trying to, now I'm like, I just, squeeze this. There's none in there. I'm telling you, there's, it's in there. We'll squeeze it. I'm telling you, there's some more. And I, they're going back and forth arguing. And finally, I went, and, and then I hear, well, did you take it? And I went, I don't understand what the, I think I, I'm missing something here. Yeah, because I'm trying on. to figure out like now, the scenario. So I go, and it, and and he's saying rub it on or rub it on me rub it on me, you know and I'm I'm like what okay now I have to look so I turn and I go to the shower stall and you know I'm like five foot six so I don't I'm not I'm, I walk over and I'm yeah over the shower stall and the one gay guy is in the shower stall and the other guy is in in is in the shower stall and he's got a bottle of nair and he's nairing his back the other guy's back <laughs> and i was like and i i like look over and i'm like oh nair that makes sense and they're like matt and I, you know, what do you want cox i was like nah i had a whole thing in my head yeah all right like anybody carry would. on shake it you have to shake <laughs> it so i finished up and left where'd you grow up uh, in tampa florida so you're not like far because this place is also no i'm, I'm we're what hour and a half yeah. So like, but you also, I mean, I imagine Florida is also pretty conservative, right? Yeah. So like <laughs> I I was raised on a tobacco farm. Like, right. We had cattle and I worked in hay, every, you know. Do you know where uh, um, Okeechobee is? Okeechobee? Do you know where Lake Okeechobee? So, I don't. You know, so, okay. So you were raised in, I mean, you were educated in the South. 
I was in the South. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so Florida, so Florida, there's, you know, that big dot, that big lake in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. Lake o- okay. Okeechobee. So there's Okeechobee County and, you know, Lake Okeechobee and the city of Okeechobee. And that's where Je- uh, Jess was raised. And it's mostly cow uh, pastures and um, dairy farms. And what else is there? <laughs> We're pretty much out. Yeah. So just farmland. Yeah. 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 Rednecks and pickup trucks. So you know what I'm talking about. So like being in that situation or, so you were like, you know, more 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 urban city. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't think I saw a black person until I was like 26. Oh, she did. (laughs) (laughs) She did. She did her story the other day. And like the second episode, she said, she talks about how she moved to Gainesville and went to to public school. And she's like, like, that was the first time I'd ever seen a, a, black person yeah ever and you try not to stare and you're not being racist you're just interested it's like <laughs> he wanted to go up and be like yeah you want to touch him and yeah, like yeah. it's interesting uh, the closest thing i had i grew up in arizona in the middle of cattle ranching and so it was just everybody was belt buck big belt buckles and boots all the time and we had two brothers in our school that were half blacks and that was it that was that was just about it for our whole school and they were probably adopted <laughs> They're half black, half Navajo. So I oh, okay. see that one every day. They must have been hell of a fighters. Oh yeah. You know? like, I mean. Well the one one kid was a cannonball. I did not want to get in a fight with him at all. He just roll you over and you just get up all broken and bloody and go on your on your way. In your experience in prison, who was the race that like Fighting wise, who would win the race? Who would win the ra- race war? <laughs> I'm trying to be You're diplomatic get, like, here. The whole channel. I, I mean, I've already, I already realized it's never getting monetized. Yeah. Now I'm just hoping we can save the channel. <laughs> <laughs> can we just keep the channel going? How do I say it? Who would? It depends. I'm sure it depends on the numbers. If if all the races met in a field outside of Wyoming, <laughs> all the races, who and it was just fisticuffs. Because you've got you've seen the front lines of this, you know how how it happens. Who wins? Who walks away? Who wins? Who runs the world? <laughs> this is like uh, that is a great question. That's a great question. That's a probably a touchy I don't, subject. Let's I talk don't about feel genocide. like I don't feel like I'm <laughs> I'm equipped to. First of all, I mean, like in prison, like it's it's in the low. It's probably sixty to seventy percent black, so okay. they just have the numbers. Yeah, you know, um, in the medium security prison, it's probably eighty percent black, and then maybe seventeen percent Mexican, and there's maybe two or three percent uh, white guys or others. Right. So you know, in the whole compound of let's say sixteen to eighteen hundred guys, there's twenty, maybe thirty white guys. So you know, you're just done. Yeah. So, but in the low, there's more whites, but the whites that are there are more educated. Yeah. So, you know, these are not like I. I, I know. You, I know you look at me and you think tough guy. Yeah. Cool guy, right? Yeah. Cool guy, tough guy. He can exactly handle himself. What I thought. Yeah. 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 But I'm actually soft as cotton. Okay. Uh, like you know, it's it's it wouldn't like genuinely. I'm not sure if I could take her. I, I outweigh her by fifty pounds, and and she's yeah, but you insisting. You could probably bench three fifteen. Like three I can, times, but right? I I can, I can, but I don't know. She has like that female <laughs> UFC fighter build. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah, yeah. She oh, look, it's just the shoulders. Yeah, they're it's ridiculous. She's got like that so, Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey kind of figure. <laughs> I mean, oh, listen, listen. She was a hog hunting tour guide for seven years. Oh, she that makes t- perfect sense. Okay, was in the military. Right, so you see, you were the in the military too. I did hog hunting myself, but it was in Wilmington. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> what what branch were you in? Really, where were you stationed? Okay, that's awesome. When did you get out? My brother was I, well. I came from an army family, and I was I would say my bro, my dad would have probably disowned me, but he he died before that happened. So. Thank God. <laughs> uh, yeah, he. My brother was at Fort Polk in Louisiana, I believe. So, yeah. I don't know. Back to the race war. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. I thought you were going to say Samoans. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, they, actually, they're. Oh, oh. Actually, that's funny because there actually there were a couple of, of Samoan guys. There was a Samoan. I went to a drug program, and there was a Samoan guy that attacked in the middle of like our. We had like a morning meeting. In the middle of the morning meeting, he attacked another guy. Like all the all the the guards are there. Like everybody's yeah. there. And he just attacked him, and he'd already been to trial twice in Hawaii. He was like a crypt or a blood. He'd been to trial twice for murder in Hawaii and beat two charges. Yeah. I remember being like- They're not so, human. I, I mean that in the best. I don't mean that like, they're not human. Yeah, they look like the rock. I don't yeah, mean yeah. that in the way that it sounds whenever somebody like me says that. I'm, they ain't human. I mean that like, they're not human. They're like superhuman. Yeah. He was a big, muscular, tough guy. Yeah. Yeah. They're badasses. Yeah. I, would, I always picture like Samoans. If you made a, It's like the if rock. You, if you made a race war fighting game for like Xbox. Isn't the rock Samoan? Isn't he, he like- is. Yeah. 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 I feel like in the video game, they would be like three times. You would have to spend the money in the video game for one Samoan. Like you would have, you would have, they would cost one Samoan would cost as much as like six Watts. Right. And, oh my God. and you would probably get three blacks for one Samoan. So, you know how sometimes like we get, sh uh, uh, we get it, <laughs> we, we get it's demonetized and then you could ask for a review. This is one of those times where it's like, you just take it. Like you definitely don't want it. Like you, you get the review, you review it, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, we did make a mistake." I thought I was giving compliments. I <laughs> this thought this is the whole the whole channel has to come down. <laughs> Welcome to my editing. <laughs> yeah, he has to deal with this shit all the time. Um, I don't even know what to say. I'm sorry, I don't know man. What else. I don't what, know what, what I am. If this I was am. your podcast, what else would you ask? <laughs> if my this is my podcast, we'd be talking about. It gets worse. Hey, so you have a, 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 it's a niche market for you. Yeah, but they're like passionate. But we have, they are super, pa aren't they? Like, yeah, we had a small army show up yeah, we've had to the convention just for the 1159 media. The time. So just fans, just our own fans. it is very niche, but what other working. crime type uh, um, conventions are there? Other than crime, this con. is it that I know of. Yeah, well, you said the other one was. Uh, well, Horror Hound is more like uh, horror, like uh, horror <laughs> movies and, and horror. Horror. <laughs> I have the same problem with the word raw roll. <laughs> R U R A L. You got, I always feel like you got to go raw roll. So okay, so this is it. Crime con's it. This is it. This is a lot of murders. It's all murders. Crime con is also super corporate, and we don't fit into the. Stop it. <laughs> I'm not I was kidding. wearing a Waffle House slit slide yesterday <laughs> next to a guy in a suit. So, <laughs> so probably be our last. The more you listen, in, the more you realize why they brought me. In. Yeah, <laughs> you sure got pretty lips. Boy. Yeah, <laughs> and I've made moves on him on multiple occasions. And I actually don't think I'm supposed to be within 500 feet of him right now. Oh, um, I, I disabled that restraining order just for crime con doesn't go into effect till like next Sunday. So. He does have to edit everything, and I always feel like he has to make the call on what that's not going in or that isn't going in. It's usually that's not, but Still a lot of it. we just have fun, man. It's it's a lot of fun, and it's fun for me because three years ago I was just a blue collar dude in a in a, in a machine shop. I had already like subscribed to the idea of I'm going to be here for 30 years and then I'm going to die of some form of cancer. Right. I understand. And I just hope that I make it better for my girl, my kids. And I was okay with, and that's fine. If you're living that life, yeah, that's yeah. fine. I respect that. No, that's, that's what keeps America going. I mean, that's why I was okay with it because that's fine, but I wasn't looking for any of this. And Jack Luna just pecked me out of the, and gave me a microphone and, do you, did you build a sound studio in your house? Yeah. Or, cool. In yeah. The, closet, they actually actually... sent me all the gear. Okay. Uh, the company, 1159 did. And I ended up taking a bathroom out of my basement and turning it, converting it to a recording booth. And the rest is history. Cool. So it's been a wild ride. Super thankful. And if it honestly, if it ended tomorrow, I would be okay with that. That's why I'm so, I think that's why I am the way I am, honestly. Because it's like, if somebody's like, we're going to, if somebody tried to cancel me, it's fucking cancel me. I don't give a shit. I'll okay. go back to a machine shop and be happy about it. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to, 
you're not going to hurt me. So I'm happy either way, with or without this. And then for me, it was just something that I was looking to do on the side just just to get, you know, I've always wanted to create. And so I was like, eh, this would be something fun. I wasn't ever thinking it was going to be my full-time job. Right. Like I worked for a, mu- a municipality. I was doing water treatment and wastewater treatment. So I was being cross-trained at the town facilities where I lived. And it just, I just sent it in because it was something I was doing anyways. I was just writing things on the side, writing stories on the side. And I sent it in. And next thing I know, I'm doing it full-time. So this was never, you know, I never thought this would be a full-time gig for me. But it's just what it kind of turned into. Yeah, that's, yeah, I understand. That's, I was just laying in, in, a, in a bunk bed in a prison. How old were you in there? 13, 13 years, right? I did, yeah, 13 years. It's fucking crazy. That's How old were you when you went in? First 10 years is the hardest. <laughs> the last three, though. <laughs> so it was like, I hated leaving, like, honestly. I, know, I did. I was like, it's not enough time. I was right in the middle of the story, and I was like, it's not enough time. <clears throat> How old were you when you went in? Uh, 30, 30, 36, 37. 37? Yeah, yeah, I was about I was 37, I think. How old are you now? I'm 54. Jesus Christ. I hope I look like that at 54 years old. How old are you now? 36. I look like shit. You think I didn't know? <laughs> like it's going to start now. No. My old tits are bigger than my wife's. It wasn't always like this. She didn't sign up for this. I feel bad for her. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was the same thing. Like I, I got out. I didn't even know how I was going to make a Like I got out, what, four, four years ago? Four years ago. Yeah. Four years ago, and I thought, I, I didn't know how I was going to make a living. I remember thinking just before I was laying in my cot thinking, listen, bro, like you're going to work at McDonald's. You're going to live in someone's spare room. You're going to be happy. You're going to be humble. You're going to be appreciative. You're not going to commit any crimes. You're just going to live your life out. And if that's the best you got, then that's the best you fucking got. Like I yeah. told myself. I, I, in, in a, in you I didn't also, want to get your hopes up. Right, right. Oh, I also thought to myself, you're going to give it a year and you're going to commit fraud. No, you know, if, if things don't work, yeah. work out for you. you know, there, there was a battle. <laughs> but at least there you was, had that year. There was a battle. Yeah. Was a battle going on. But yeah. And then then uh, about what? Two, and, two, two and a half years. About two and a half years ago, yeah, I started started doing tic, uh, TikTok. Started doing YouTube for about six months, and then met uh, Colby, and then you know we kind of teamed up and started doing this podcast. That's and, fucking awesome, yeah. man! But it didn't take off like you know yours. It sounds like yours kind of took off like right away. Like it, it took. It's really in the last six months, six seven months that it's really started like it's picking up paying. Well, no, like paying all of our bills. Like now it's to the point where it's like this is all I do. That's amazing. Which That's is awesome. which it is amazing because like just shooting my mouth off is all it, one thing I've ever been good at. What did you do after you got out of prison? Like between in that period where this wasn't covering the. I mean, I painted and I had written a bunch of true crime books. So I'd written about six true crime books while I was incarcerated and a bunch of stories. And so I oh, it took several months for me to edit them and put them on Amazon but I also started doing podcasts and that were, and when I would tell my story, it'd get, you know, a million, two million views. Yeah. And so that was selling books. So I'm getting a thousand, fifteen hundred a month off the books. And I'm working, I'm doing paintings. Like I would sell paintings because I, I can paint. So I would sell paintings and I was doing some speaking engagements. And then so that was kind of, I was, my bills were nothing. You know, I'm living in someone's spare room. Yeah. So just as that kind of, I started the podcast and it kind of slowly transitioned out of that into just this. And now it's obviously I get paintings. I have a Patreon and, you know, uh, and this is now paying, you know, for everything. So that's awesome. It was, it was when you say paintings, like what, what kind of stuff were you paint like fruit? <laughs> what are you painting? I w- if I had to, I would. Um, no, I mean, I paint, you know, I paint painting. I paint. I'm going to. Yeah, I want to see some okay. of your paintings. Yeah. Let's, let's go ahead. I love that phone case, by the way. Let's go ahead. <laughs> I got three. This is the first time that I've actually asked somebody to see their art and enjoyed the art. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Usually, yeah, they show it to you and you're yeah. like, oh, it's like looking at no, pictures of their good. kids. I like that. That's kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just got the, like, like, like at Colby's like, we might as well wrap this up. <laughs> this is an hour of demonetization. Who was it? I did do. 
I, I painted some pictures of this, this after this conversation. It's such a horrible thing to say. I was because I have I have painted some pictures of people's kids, but they sent me the photos. They were fully clothed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I told him I was like trying to gauge on the way over here, like what I can. <laughs> no. Col oh, listen. Colby's a square. He's. I, I mean, it, it, especially compared to, to compared to all of us. Well, he handled it well because he brought up Chris Hansen. Yeah. And I said, and I straight faced just to see how he would react. I said, yeah, I've actually met Chris Hansen, but it was at 3 a.m. in a random neighborhood and he wasn't happy to see me. <laughs> and then I like, and I did it straight face just to see, and he started laughing. I was like, all right, we're going to be good. Yeah, We're, we're going to be, this is going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had, we had, yeah, the guy with the Chris Hansen. Is that what you were talking about? That guy? Yeah. I love those. And can imagine I was in prison and the, at the low security prison, like 40% of the inmates have like some kind of, some kind of a uh, sex crime. Yeah. Connected. So you, so you, I, so I've met, I've met guys that have been on the guy, guys that like showed up with like a harp, you know what I'm saying? Like the kids showed up with like a harp and, you know, and a bottle of KY and, and a box full of condoms. And he was just there to talk <laughs> out of it. I didn't know she was 12. Yeah. yeah. Like, you're like, I was trying to make life a live in hell for those guys. when I, I was a corrections officer, but in like the most legal way possible, right. like I never did anything illegal, but I wasn't going to get you. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. that extra thing of soap. You know what I mean? Like I did it all within what is legal, but I wasn't going to do anything extra for those guys. And it also made me smile when they got their asses handed to them. Listen, prison is, it's so packed with them now that where it used to be, you know, like they, they, they basically had to stay in their cell all the time. They couldn't walk out. They, they don't look at anybody that there's Good. so, yeah, but there's so many of them now. Oh yeah. They're starting to, oh, they're outnumbering. Yeah. There's 40%. And and here's the thing. It's not just like that's the, the, the guy got locked up for that Do alone. you think that's because of the internet? <laughs> um, you think? Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's not just that, but there will also be guys that have been to prison before. Yeah. And then they've got charges. So if they don't have to be there on that charge, but on their jacket, they've got a statutory rape or they've got a whatever in their jacket. So now they've got a problem. Now, how do people, I've always wondered this, how do you guys find out what so-and-so's charges are? Like how I mean, does the Most of them have, are, have been in, in the newspaper or you can so go it just on. Kinda... Yeah, you can go on, you can go on, pay, have somebody on the outside go on Pacer. First of all, it doesn't, I'll tell you what happened, what would happen all the time. Some guy would come in, and here's what they always say. They never say, they say one or two things. My lawyer said, I'm, uh, some guys will go up to him and say, hey, bro, what, uh, what are you here for? And they go, my lawyer said not to talk about my charges. He's a cho. Yep. Um, or they, you walk in, they walk in, and they're like, oh, I'm here for fraud. And then so what would happen is some guy, some white guy would come to me. This, and I was Kenny King. His name was Kenny. Kenny, Kenny did this notorious. He'd go, oh, okay. Hold on a second. He come in. Cox, come here. I go, yeah, what's up? He goes, there's a new guy here. Says he's here for fraud. Ah, Kenny, I don't want to talk to the guy. Get, come on now. Come oh, just go they, talk to they him. They had you to fish out the. I'd walk over. I'd go, hey, man, you're here for fraud. And Kenny be sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> and I, he, what's you here for? And I, he go, I, this, I have the one that was hilarious because the guy goes, he said, oh, I'm here for credit card fraud. And I went, credit card fraud? Is, is that, they charge you with credit card fraud? Yeah. I go, was that the charge? Yeah. There's no credit card fraud charge. Right. It's, it's access device fraud. It's counterfeiting. It's identity theft. It's wire fraud. There's no credit card fraud. Not in the federal system, you know? So, and, and I, I go, oh, okay. And I, then I, but he, he may be wrong. Like in his mind, I've heard mortgage fraud guys say, oh, I'm here for mortgage fraud. They charge you with mortgage fraud? Yeah. There's no mortgage fraud charge. It's financial institution fraud. It's wire fraud. It's money laundering. It's bank fraud. There's no mortgage fraud, you know? So, I don't, you know, so I, so you're I, like so, the, you're like the pedo drug dog. Right. In there. <laughs> <laughs> so this one kid goes, so he's sitting there and he's like, yeah, uh, credit card fraud. I said, well, what were you doing? Well, I, I was, I was taking money out of people's credit cards. I said, well, how? And he's like, w what do you mean? I go, well, I mean, like, did you work at a bank? Like, did you work at a retailer? Were you able to get a, access to the cards and charge them? Like, how are you pulling money out of their cards? And he's like, oh, well, it, it it's not a learning experience. And I went, Okay, I look at Kenny. I go, he's a cho, and Kenny goes, I knew it. Oh. And, walk, and you walk off like that's it. He's a, he's a cho. and he, of course he was. It you later come out. It later comes out, you know, that he was looking at pictures online, you know, and they came in. The FBI comes. He ends up buying some stuff from an FBI 
run website because the FBI is probably populating 80% of the stuff out there to get these guys. Yeah. And they come in, you know, a couple of weeks later, they indict him. They come in, they grab his computer. That's it. It's over. And what's the ter- scariest f- thing about it was his family ran like a mortuary. So God knows what was going oh, on there. Oh, Jesus. So, and he, he got, I think he got like three or four years. I think his name was Ian. Um, it's always a fucking Ian. <laughs> so yeah but that happened all the time guys and they always say fraud they never come in and say something like you know they don't think they can pull off like drug dealer they right. don't think they can because they know there's off. enough in there to quickly have them right right you can't fake it right? right so so they think oh i can fake fraud no you can't like fraud's just as hard like well yeah i'm you could better tell me how you committed this fraud like how is it yeah they can't come up with it People always think, oh, I can commit fraud. Really? How? What are you going to do? Uh, I, I would steal people's identity. How are you going to do that? How, how is that easy? Especially in do? 2023. Right, so so <laughs> it is this, hard. This is how you did it in 1850. I, My name is Randy now. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in, in Coleman, there's uh, one unit just dedicated to the, the military. Right? Really? Yeah. So Like people that committed crimes while in active duty? No, 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 no. Guys that have military service. So you've got a DD-214, you served your country, you got out, you robbed a bank. Well, we've got a special unit, you get special privileges because you were in the military. I don't know if I support that. No, why? Some guy did 20 years or 10 years or five, got a DD-214. Listen, special privileges don't mean much. It's still prison. You know what I'm saying? It's not like... Um, but here's the thing about the problem with that unit is, is that I would say Pete actually, Pete, my buddy Pete, sorry, I have a buddy in prison. My buddy, his, Pete was the, um, the counselor's clerk. And w- I don't know what the reason is, and I'm not saying anything against the military, but it was packed with shows. Yeah. Packed with them. So you've got... So at one point, out of 160 guys, and it, and it, it didn't have as many, like other units have 180, 150 of them Air Force. Listen, <laughs> listen, there were 30, there was like 30 guys that didn't have Cho charges. Yeah. So out of 160, there's 130 had Cho charges. Wow. What kind of special privileges are you talking um, like they, they might have like a library in there, in their, you know, just like a small room with a library or they would have an area where they could watch movies or it was, it was quieter. It was much cleaner, much more disciplined. Yeah. Uh, a lot of those guys are, were, would be older. And so it was a, a listen, I would have moved in that unit. It was quieter. It was cleaner. Everybody was respectful and they're all shows. I mean, you put me a around 130 shows like i'm a fucking gangster yeah i'm a badass in front of a fucking bunch of because they know they're weak they know they're terrified they're terrified they're some it's you'd be you would think that the most of them would be kind of like humble and meek and all or you think all of them would be meek and ashamed yeah there's a group that will argue with you about it that this is that oh yeah that like no well it's been going around for forever if it wasn't for the the government for these laws it's it's draconian it's bullshit like oh if you're in mexico you can marry a 13 year old i don't see what the problem is it's like okay well you're not in mexico and it's not and well in, in greek in the greek you know back in the back in the roman times or whatever you know in 400 ad it was it was normal to fight well, we ain't in 400 ad you know, you could. We you also could, thought the Earth was flat, right? And you could own <laughs> slaves. You know, there's lots of things that were were acceptable back then. Yeah, but yeah. So so they would they'll they're literally they'll argue to to a degree, but they're still just they're still just not tough people. Yeah, you know, they prey on children. Well, it takes a, so I think a special kind of person yeah. to. You would get every once in a while. You'd get some guy who'd been in the military, who'd been through the been a marine, and. He would knock, and some guy would get be giving him a hard time. Oh, hey, fuck you, you fucking Joe, hey man, fuck you. But what, what, what? And just knock him out, and the dude yeah. would drop. You'd be like, "Damn, you just got dropped by a Cho." Yeah, like you, can, you might as well check. How in. many notches does that drop your status? Like immediately. <laughs> it's bad. So say like that happened to like a block. I, I just worked in a jail, so I don't know. Like, there's a lot of differences in a jail and a prison, but like, say a, a block. Uh, what do they call them? The leaders. The Oh yeah, the shot caller. A shot caller. Say that happened to a shot caller. He just got knocked out by a show. Like, yeah, oh yeah, he's probably out of it. He's probably he probably has to check in and, and just wait till they ship him. 
that quickly. Just, it would be bad. And, and this is a low too. So you don't really have that. You you have it's a very loose kind of thing. Yeah. These are guys that fight over stupid stuff. Yeah. Like it's ramen noodles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I get it. They will. They will. We've had that conver- we've we've had that conversation many times where guys will get into fights over stuff that you're like, the guy borrowed two magazines from you and then lent them out to a buddy of his, and now nobody knows where they are, and you got into a fight with the guy. Physical yeah. altercation. Yeah. Yeah. But you never like you you were Me, you look, seem like the kind of guy that's smart enough to be like, that's not fucking worth it. Yeah, that's, yeah. Well, first of all, I don't lend anything out. Yeah. Like I one, I don't lend it out. And if I do, I don't ask for it back. I don't run up bills. I'm I'm respectful to everybody. Yeah. I don't gamble. I don't talk about people. Like there's certain things that will get you in trouble. Cause in prison, if you get stabbed, you probably had it coming. Like, yeah. There's a damn good chance you did something. Yeah, there's a there's there's a story there. Right, right. Like you you ran up a debt. And then you decided not to pay it. The guy gave you ample opportunities. Let you said, "Hey, look, I'll make some payments. I'll get your family to do this." Let's and you basically just told him, "Go fuck yourself. You ain't going to do nothing." Okay, now I got to do something. Yeah. So it's like either I have to try and get moved, or I have to hurt you somehow. Yeah. Like I don't want to be in that position. So somebody comes and said, "Hey, Cox, can I borrow this? Can I?" No, bro. Well, I don't lend stuff out. Oh man, it's like that. It, it's like that. It is like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You know, I, I wish I could, but and then, well, what's the problem, dude? I said, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, if I gave it to you and you didn't give it back to me, not that I think you would, but if you if I did and you didn't give it back to me, what am I going to do? And now I'm just some punk, so I don't fucking lend anything out. I don't borrow from save anybody. you and them, right? Yeah. And, and, they, and they would, you know, people. If you're just honest, they're like, yeah, that's cool, bro. I, I get it. And they, they'll walk off. Yeah, go talk to Brandon. Brandon will lend his shit out. And then you guys can fight about it yeah, next week. He'll beat the hell out of you <laughs> if yeah. you don't give it back. I'm not going to do that. How often did you see uh, one thing that I saw as a corrections officer, even in jail, was like we get a new kid in there. He'd be 18, 19 years old, come from like kind of a, a wealthy background, right? And he'd get like first time they get commissary. I'd be handing commissary out and it'd be like, say, Brandon Smith. And he'd have a commissary bag like this big, just stacked to the gill. And all these other guys that have been in here for two or three years, whatever. And I'm handing them one bag of Fritos. And you see this kid take this giant bag and you're like, I'm I'm watching him go away. And I'm thinking, you're not going to eat any of that. Yeah. That's they are going to rape you. Like, you know, yeah, like the second gonna... I shut this door, you're done for, dude. Yeah, that's a bad that's a mistake. They should probably stagger that fucking purchase. Um, that was one of the first things like I noticed like as an as a corrections officer is like, I think if I was in, I just wouldn't order anything on commissary. I, I wouldn't have anything. I would try well, to intentionally not have anything. So jails are filled with like guys that, you know, burglarize a place, steal a car, get into a fight, right? They're low level kind of criminals, right? Like, yeah. So, you know, every once in a while you might get some guy who stole $300,000, but they're, that's rare. Yeah. Most of these guys are, you know, they're, they're domestic violence, they're fist fights, they're, they're thefts. Uh, they're state crimes. Yeah. So those are more violent areas. Like I, I was never in one of those those jails. Like even if I, I was in a jail, it was the U.S. Marshals holdover. So I'm with federal inmates. N- not that not that those things don't happen, but those guys are in custody waiting to be processed for really complicated large cases big deals yeah yeah so they're in there and they're not really pressuring people to give up their stuff and they're not fight because that'll come back on you yeah you know these this is it's not a mill it's the feds the mill like that guy that's been in and out of jail like if he gets into a fight in the jail they don't even bring it up at, at sentencing here you get into it your honor he did this he did this he pled guilty and guess what when he was in in jail he was robbing guys and beating them up to steal their stuff and the judge would be like oh hell no and you got the low end of the guidelines you were going to get 120 months yeah i'm throwing on three years and they know that like guys behave in there their lawyers tell them like don't talk to anybody else don't tell them this don't this do not get in any trouble in here and most of these guys have somebody to put money on their books yeah you know they're not broke they weren't raising the projects and they're struggling they had money yeah that's part of the problem so you know and they have their still have family that will kind of help support them and the other guys are everybody's getting you know everybody's getting commission uh getting money so, so when the commissary thing rolls around, like almost everybody's got commissary, especially you just got, you just got arrested. Your wife's still around, you know, your kids still, still come to see you. Yeah. Your, your friends are still hoping you'll get out because they still remember what a baller you were. You're not right. broke yet. And so, so those things don't typically happen 
um, now when you go, and then when you go to prison, you know, once again, it's a federal prison and they typically, they have money, they have hustles, they have jobs. Um, you don't, you, you, you know, I've heard of people, guys getting pressured uh, to pay like extortion and stuff like that. When I was in, that never happened to me when I was in the medium where you're really in a vulnerable spot, right? Because I'm a little white guy. I, I'm not, there's, there's not enough white guys to, to, to eat, watch, watch each other's backs. Yeah. So one. Six white guys equals two Samoans. <laughs> and the video in that we're making about so, the race war. Right. <laughs> so, so it never happened there. But when I went to, when I went to the low, uh, uh, you know, and you're in a low, sec- now we're in a low security. Yeah. So, you know, these guys are really stabbing each other and causing each other and fights and everything in the medium. And now I'm at the low. I was at the low, maybe whatever, six, I don't even remember how long, six months, three months, maybe. And I remember I was in my cell and I'm sitting there reading a book and, you know, and this black guy walks in and he's tall. He's like six, four, six, five. He's, he's tall. Uh, and he walks in. I remember he got re- he got closer than he should have gotten. And I and I'm sitting there reading. And I will, and I look up at him. I go, "What's up?" And he's like, and he goes, "Listen, man, this is how this is gonna work." And I go, "Okay." Oh. And my celly is is sitting over here too. Right? He's a Mexican guy, in a big guy in good shape. Like I'm not really not worried. I'm worried. It's uncomfortable. Like something's like about he, to this happen. isn't good. Whatever this isn't it is. good, but yeah. I'm I'm not gonna get my ass beat. Somebody, you know, there's too many people around, there's, you know, and I'm, I'm very well liked. It's not going to happen. So, and also you just don't like it when somebody, I don't, I don't know how somebody okay. don't open a conversation with this is how it's going to happen. Yeah, that's a bad, that's a bad, even, yeah, even out here. Yeah. So, um, and I'm sitting there and he goes, listen, bro, this is going to, how this is going to work. He goes, I'm going to, he said, you're going to get me. I, I'm, I forget exactly what he said. I, I probably said that before, but I might get it wrong, but he's like, you're going to get me $50 in commissary every single month. You understand me? He said, and nobody's going to bother you. I went, yeah? He goes, yeah. And I said, all right. I said, Kid, you got a list? And he goes, I ain't playing, man. And I said, I'm, bro, I'm not playing any, but what am I going to get you? $50 in commissary. You want all soda? Yeah. I said, give me a list, bro. And he goes, man, I, I, I ain't joking. I said, I'm not. I said, I, I hear what you're saying. You have to know what he wants. I said, I need to know what you want. Give me the list and I'll get the commissary for you. And he went, all right, man. I said, dude, make, do me a favor. I said, make sure you put your put your cell number on it so I know where to bring. I don't know where, you, where you're at. And he goes, why? I said, to be honest with you, I said, because when I take the list and I go to the counselor's office and I walk him back to your cell, I want to know what cell to bring him, bring him to so we can discuss how you're trying to extort me for fifty dollars in commissary? And he goes, "Oh, it's like that, like that. You're gonna, you're just gonna fuck you snitch him, you and snitch on me. That's what you're gonna do." I said, "Bro, if I didn't pay extortion in the fucking medium, do you think I'm coming to a low filled with a bunch of chosen snitches?" I said, "To fucking pay?" I said, "I'm not paying, and you're not doing nothing." I said, "Get the fuck out! Are you serious?" I said, yeah, I'm going to fucking go tell on you. I'm going to fucking tell on everybody. I'm going to snitch you out. At that out. point, also, you're probably 40 years old. It's like, I don't, I've been, snitches? I've been like, three what? years, I've been locked up for three fucking years. Yeah. Like the, the the camp I was at, first of all, the whole system's filled with fucking, in the federal system, it is absolutely designed to cooperate against other inmates and cooperate against your co-defendant. So every, one, you got 40%, 40, 50% are chose. The other people that are there are at a low. If the aver- if 95% of inmates cooperate and you've got out of 180 guys that are here, 60 are sex offenders, which maybe they probably didn't cooperate because they, they get nothing for it. Yeah. So 60% are, and you take 90% of, or 95% of 60, that means that in this unit, there's three guys that didn't cooperate. Now, granted, 95% are, they're all 100% are lying about it, but there's 3%. And we know who those are because it's that guy, he went to trial, that guy went to trial, and that guy went to trial, so they didn't cooperate, which means everybody sitting here cooperated. So everybody here snitching on everybody, and I know you don't want to go anywhere because you're at a low. I'm like, but, you know, whatever, give me the list. And he's just like, oh, all right, that's how it's going to be. We're gonna, you're going to find out. I said, all right, I'll find out. And he walks off. Let me ask you this. Realistically, 
realistically, I, I, even he if never you, came back, even if you had gotten him the stuff and you did, would he have actually? Here's my. Would he have actually put forth the efforts to provide you the protection, uh, the protection that he claims, yeah, the protection that I didn't need? That's I've just him. Tell, that's basically saying I'm not going to kick your ass, right? Right. Because there's no. Because he's not going to stop anybody no, else from doing. Yeah. No, he's not going to do anything, and nobody's doing anything. It's like if you come up to me the first couple of days, it would have been the same. Same. He would have got the same response. Yeah. Like you at the medium, he might have. That might have. It wouldn't have worked on me because I don't have anything. I don't have the ability to pay you $50. I'll bring you right now to my commissary account and I'll show you that right now I don't receive money on my books. Nobody gives me any money. Nobody sends me money. Like for the first three years I was locked up, my mother sent me $50 here, maybe $50 there because I immediately got a job um, teaching GED and teaching the real estate class. In the real estate class, guys would show up and... Let's say 40 people show up, 30 people show up, 15 or 20 of them don't want to be there. They want a certificate so they can tell their counselor, look, I got a certificate. Yeah. So what I would do is I, the first thing I say, listen, if you don't want to be here, you can leave. Find me before class next time. Come early. Find me on the compound. Give me your information. Get me, you know, whatever, two bags of coffee, three, th three bags of creamer. And bring that to me. I'll make sure you get a certificate. I'll fill out all your paperwork for you. I'll give you the certificate. You can, get a cer you can leave. You know, you're going back to sell drugs. You don't want to fucking sit in this class for the next three months. And so, listen, half the class would leave. And then, you know, and now I just have to deal with people that want to be here. And then I, I, I got tons of commissary. Or I'd some guy would come and I'd say, hey, man, listen, just give me a six pack of soda. And I, I, I really just ate in the, you know, I didn't, I didn't need anything. So I was, so I was never in a position. You can't shake me down. I got nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Not, that's the best way to stay. I've right. never been to prison, but that's right. how I always figured. Well, by the time I got to the to the low, now I'm getting money on my books because now I'm writing people's books. I'm getting book deals. Right. I'm getting money in. I optioned somebody's somebody's life rights. They're sending me money. You got a book deal in prison? I got two book deals in prison. In, no shit. Yeah. yeah. I got, a, got some guys in Rolling Stone magazine, um, optioned the film rights to one of the guy's stories, got a book deal off that guy. Got another book deal for a, another guy. After that one, now people are lining up to talk to me. So I got another book deal after that. Then I just started writing writing books because by that time I was I was realizing I was going to be getting out of prison pretty soon. So I just started writing stories. And then when I got out, I just published the books that didn't have because I probably wrote I really wrote eight I wrote eight books, but I had six that I was able to publish myself. The other ones are actually with publishers. So I right. And listen, what how what a fucking racket that is! Like you get a check for like thirty five hundred bucks, and you don't see another check for years. And now the checks I get, so now nobody buys that book anymore. I get a check every six months for like one hundred and fifteen dollars, you know. So, but the other books sell, and you know that's you know that's a car. It's a car payment. You should have got a booth at Crown. I should have, but my handlers, my handlers waited too long. Gangbusters. This is your fault. Yeah, yeah, I got connection for us. Yeah, we don't even know. I don't, they don't know. like us very much. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're not going to mention your name. We just we need the phone number. We don't. Uh, we don't mix it. They, they don't. But I mean, they would have. There was. There was. A, there's an author beside our booth. Yeah. That. Oh well. What I should. What I should have done was done the. Like I. I get paid for. I get paid to go to. What uh, banking conventions, uh, mortgage conventions, cybercrime conventions, and uh, to tell my story. So I. I should have. Could have been a speaker. Like I probably. If we put in. I can see you doing that, you know. Yeah, and I got like a forty-five minute version of my story, an hour version, two hour version. That you know, twenty-four hour version. Twenty-four hour version. Twenty-four yeah. hour video. Yeah, <laughs> sold over six months, but that's so, awesome, man. Yeah, so you know, we'll see. But yeah, so the the people paying, I'm sure some people people definitely do. Some guys get in there; they're just terrified, they're scared to death, yeah. and and I kind of just come to the conclusion: you're just going to get your ass beat a lot. Yeah. You've got a slick mouth expect to get your ass beat every once in a while eventually they'll leave you alone it's did just, you get in trouble a lot growing up like w were you a good student and no. athlete and everything no i was a horrible student i was a horrible athlete i have a learning disability you know so you you got you were a troublemaker from the from i the wasn't a troublemaker i just i wasn't a troublemaker i just i went to schools for kids that had learning disabilities i had a okay. learning disability but i wasn't a great athlete you know i'm five foot six like how good are you going to be um you know i played soccer Muggsy a little Bowles. bit Huh? Muggsy Bowles. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. I think he's like five foot four, plays he in the was NBA. The shortest NBA player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't me. So yeah. 
So no, no, I I I didn't get in trouble till I was like thirty years old. Not even like a a night, like a DUI, and, and no, a, a, I don't drink. Really, I don't Damn. drink. I don't smoke cigarettes. Never dealt with drugs. No, no, nothing like that. Nothing like that. What year did you get in trouble for your? Well, the first time I got in trouble was like two thousand one, and then I was on probation, and I was ran a scam. I. I stole like eleven and a half million during that scam, and then the FBI showed up, and I went on the run for three years, and I stole another like three and a half million. It's fucking. I was on, on the run for three years, and I got arrested, and then I went to prison. So I had like a so it was two thousand and it was almost late late two thousand six when I got arrested by the Secret Service. Um, so really, it was like this. It was like November of two thousand six, so it was almost two thousand seven. So I got sentenced in two thousand seven, and then I got out in uh, two thousand nineteen. I got out of prison. You still on probation? Yeah. Damn, that's bananas. When you say you, when you say you were on the run for, where did you go while you were on the run? Um, I went to, like, when I, I went on the run. I like I had no money. I had like eighty thousand, right? But you can't live on eighty thousand. So I went to Atlanta and I stole like four hundred thousand dollars. And then I went to South Carolina to uh, Columbus and I got one point seven, one point three million. I only got like seven hundred thousand out of the bank, yeah. and then I went to, <laughs> and then I went to Nashville. Then I just swung through Livingston, picked up two point six million. <laughs> I went to Nashville and <laughs> stole like like You're like talking like it's a granola bar at a gas station. Like three million, <laughs> got like three million in Nashville, and then I was there. So I was for like three years. So yeah, but I mean, I went everywhere. Like I, I went well, while I was on the run on false pass false passports. I've been to Mexico. Jamaica, Bermuda, um, Italy, um, Croatia, Greece. Is that it? Might be somewhere else. Where'd they pick you up at? <laughs> um, Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, damn. That's the worst. I love Nashville. <sighs> Nashville was great. I guess because I went there so much growing up because it's so close to where I, I live. So I'd like to, if I was going to get arrested... <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to be getting off of the getting off of my G six in uh, in Italy. Actually, I guess if I, I, I I'm gonna go to the op- if I was gonna get arrested, I would really want it to be a place that I hated, probably like Portland. I'd be all right with getting picked up in Portland. It's like at least I'm not in Portland. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to fly anywhere to Portland. to Portland. How many lip rings do you see? A billion. In all sorts of different lips, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying uh, this. I've never done anything professionally before. You still haven't. I feel like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this feels ironically a lot like when R. Kelly got in trouble, though, and he was talking to Barbara Walters about not peeing on them girls. So that's kind of what this feels like a little bit. <laughs> when you started talking about your buddy being molested, I thought this was so bad. He did. They and, got him good. They really diddled him. This makes me think of what's the what is the um what is the Asian guy that admitted being molested? Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee. Yeah. He told but that was I never laughed so hard about. I mean, I never laughed so hard in my life. He Said he was brodily molested by a guy with Down syndrome. Yeah, he kept <laughs> adding. He kept adding to it yeah. every time they thought they I thought Don't I can laugh. handle. I can handle Don't it. Laugh. I can handle it. He added something. It's like you can't laugh at that repeatedly over the course of the entire summer. <laughs> Jesus. When I was 12 years old, I got <laughs> brutally <Yeah>. molested. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, well, he had candy. Oh. <laughs> like, well, you should have started with he had candy. It's wow. funny you bring those guys up, Bobby Lee and like not so much Brian Callen, who's the other guy, or Brandon Schaub, who's so not funny. Uh, but Bobby Lee and like Theo Vaughn and uh Nate Bargatze, I love those guys. I, yeah, so they funny. are they are hilarious. Like I could I could imagine doing a podcast with them and just like it'd be one of those times where you walk away after two hours and you're like your you your sides. stomach hurts yeah. and you wake up the next day and you're like, Oh my god. I genuinely think Theo Vaughn might be one of the funniest human beings on the he, planet. It, you know, here's the he's you, so funny. You know what the problem with, with him is that He's funny because part of his funniness is, first of all, to be a comedian, you have to be smart. Yeah, you, you, you you're, there's just no. You know who said that in like her one of an interview where Barbara Walters was being interviewed, like she had retired and she was being interviewed, 
And the interviewer w- said, you've interviewed people from scientists, to doctors, to everybody. She said, who are the smartest people? She was comedians. Immediately, like, I mean, she, it, it was- No hesitation. No, she was comedians. She said, you have to be just absolutely brilliant and fast and sharp to come up with a comedic response or those jokes, the way those people are. She was, and those are some of the most amazing interviews I've ever had. They're some of the smartest people I've ever interviewed. And so here's what's what I find about Theo Vaughn is he is hilarious, but he does it in a way that you think he's not that smart, yeah. but he's got to be brilliant yeah. because his responses and the things he says are fucking hilarious. So it's like, you're saying this in a way and you're brilliant and you're saying it in a way like you're a bumpkin. A lot of times it's not even what he says, it's, it's the way how he says it. And not many people can do that. <laughs> yeah, when he, when he does the whole white privilege. Miss that. Miss that. <laughs> oh, my God. It's green privilege, bro. <laughs> what are we fighting over? Let's share this plum, homeboy. <laughs> you think I took all your shit and just don't D- got it? <laughs> God. Yeah, he's good. His podcast. What? Didn't something happen with his podcast? I heard him. Yeah, he got. He got and they called that dude out, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was like on news, Google News and everything. But I guess that guy had got hit a bunch of podcasts, uh, maybe even Bobby Lee, too. He got them for millions and millions and millions of dollars. It was just like a Tuesday for you. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Theo Vaughn. Uh, yeah, but he he called that. That guy was doing like greasy shit, though. You know, uh, ad revenue. It was something to do with ad revenue and not paying them and yeah, I don't know the whole deal, but yeah, he, he was like delaying the pay to like a bunch of podcasters, and, and yeah, wait until it's, uh, there's a name for that when they uh, some uh, some kind of scam, and they do it in uh, the dark web guy. Remember, mm-hmm. was telling us about that, where, where they keep withholding and they they back it up to the point where they get where suddenly it's like okay, we have like three million dollars that we're supposed to pay, or we could take that three million, close the operation down, and start it up over under the uh, under using this name. And nobody will catch us. Patriot Coal did that. A coal mining company, actually. But, and then the, what they also did to Theo was they had started, they st- what you said, they started the company. And then they were like, what we'll do, we don't have the money to, that we owe you. We'll pay you in shares <laughs> of <laughs> this new company. And then you promote this company so that your promotion of this company makes your shares valuable because of your influence. And we keep your money. And then we keep your money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they were trying to get. You must think. I, look, the, you know what the funny thing is? Is that. S- so scam victims. If someone who's victimized once. You think. Oh well they're twice as wise. They're actually. No. They're actually more vulnerable. And ready to be plucked again. Yeah. So a lot Man, of scam people. And I've sold get- Probably seven times. What? I've sold, I've sold LuLaRue, LuLaRue pants. LuLaRue. What LuLaRue. is it? Yeah. That's how good I was at it. You I can't even say my it. My wife actually. So did she really? Yeah, I lost like seven grand on that. That might have happened while you what were in it? prison. I don't know what there that is. This, it's an MLM clothing company. Uh, pyramid scheme. Oh, okay. And all the white girls that like pyramid, like that, like like sp- pumpkin spice lattes at the time, they were selling those Lularoo pants. My wife, man, don't do it. I was like you're gonna get taken, and she's like, nope, I'm gonna do it. My friend doesn't. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> And about six months later, I was out seven grand, which yeah. you know, <laughs> could have been a hell of a lot worse. But it stopped at about seven grand. So. And you've got a bunch of Lulu products in your. Oh, yeah, in I your, donated yeah. a bunch of stuff to Goodwill. Let's uh, just say that. They got me for a pyramid scheme. This is true. I got busted for a pyramid scheme. Not busted. They got me for, it was about $2,000. 2000, that would have been 2012. I was a Lance Corporal at the time. Thought I was going to change my life. It was called a uh, uh, World Enterprise, and I don't even. If you ask me what we sold, <laughs> fuck, I don't know, man. Dream, I, dreams, a lifestyle. That's what a it lifestyle. was. Uh, they God, just, I wish I knew you guys when I was out. Yeah. <laughs> It'd probably work. It would have worked on me then, but nowadays it would probably still work on me. And they would go into Target, and they would approach you and say, hey, I have this mentor and he wants to teach you how to change your life. And he has this book and these classes. And they're like, how old are you? What, where do you want to be in 10 years? And it was like, they were going to sell you this book and they're going to sell you this program. 
And like, it was always like 25 year old couples just going through Target. Every Target you went to, somebody would come up to you, hey, I have this mentor. He wants to, he wants to change your life. <laughs> really? He wants to change your life. Now that I'm thinking about it, we might be in a pyramid scheme right now. You got paid by 1159 Media yet? Not this month. Fuck. They caught me again, dude. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to change our life. Yeah, you, you might want to keep on. So, what on. was your, what was your thing? What'd you, what'd you do? How'd you get them? <laughs> what was the, what was the gig? That's what I'm curious about. I know it involved real estate. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the short version is I owned a mortgage company. Talk to me like I'm a three year old too, because I, I'm a I, fucking I, idiot. <laughs> I own a mortgage company. You know what a mortgage company is? Oh yeah. Okay. No. Oh. <laughs> So, yeah, I do. Okay, I own a mortgage company. This is going to be a long time. This is the short version is going to be the long version. No, I own a mortgage company. Hold, let me get some blocks out. No. Okay. Um, I own a mortgage company and I was, I got into trouble. Like we were, we would change documents every once in a while. Like, you know, you make 50,000 a year. You couldn't quite qualify for the loan, but if you made like 55, you could make it. So okay. we, we changed some things here, change a pay stub. Maybe you were late on your rent. Uh, by 30 days and so you couldn't get a loan well i'd wipe that out you know little things but so eventually i end up the short version is i end up getting in trouble right like i i was caught kind of lying on an application that's a very simplified version and i'm on probation i get three years probation so while i'm on probation i can't run the mortgage company so you know i i decided i was going to start now i'm really going to start committing scams yeah, so well, wouldn't you <laughs> So I, I figure out how to get social security to issue social security cards to children that don't exist, right? So like a 10-month-old child, I'd make a, sh uh, a fake shot record and a fake birth certificate, and I'd go in and say, my my daughter was born at home with a midwife, and here's her birth certificate, and they, they'd issue me a social security number. I'd then take that, and I'd apply for credit cards. I'd get three secured credit cards, make the payments, and in six months, I'd have 700 credit scores. I'd then make a fake ID. I'd go buy shitty houses in an area for 50000 50000 50000 And I'd record the value. I'd record the sale, not at fifty, but at 200000 So if you do that enough in an area, and I didn't do it with one person. I did it with one person after another. I, I had like- It increases the property value. The whole of, value shot up. So now this person who has that's 700 so credit scores and- has perfect rental history, 700 credit scores, W-2s, pay stubs, because I can fake all that. Yeah. This perfect borrower now owns oh, $2 million in properties that I paid 300000 for. So we refinance the properties, borrow a million dollars on them, make the payments. So I would make $600,000, $700,000. I'd make the pay a few payments, and then my borrower would have a tragic accident. They would die, they would be in a coma or whatever, and they couldn't make the payments anymore. So the houses would go into foreclosure and the banks would take them back and resell them. So I walk away with the money. So that went on for about 18 months. I borrowed eleven and a half million dollars. Uh, at some point, a friend of mine got busted. He cooperated with the authorities. Uh, the FBI comes to arrest me. I'm already on probation. So they can just come grab me. So I I find out the FBI is coming to grab me. I go off on the run. I take off on the run. I borrow, like I said, I, I only had like a day to get out as much as I could. Yeah. We had a few million, but you know, I had like a day. So I got out like 80 grand. I go, I borrow 400,000. I steal someone's ID, identity, borrow 400,000. Then I start, I start surveying homeless people. Don't judge me. I see you judging me. So Man, I start- I'm judging you. <laughs> you heard me? So- <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I I start doing that, and by this point, like I said, by this point, I've figured out how to get um, the DMV local state DMVs to give me credit card. I mean, to give me uh, to give me um, driver's licenses. Okay, I figured out how to get the U.S. State Department to issue me passports. So, and I'm going and getting you know a million here. I'm running different scams for about th after about three years. Boom! I get I get a, I'm. Actually, it was Dateline NBC News was about to come out with a special on me. And so I was going to take off. And so we're pulling money out of the banks, me and the girl I was dating. And she ends up confiding in a friend of ours uh, who I am. And that person, that girl goes to the Secret Service, tells them, hey, this fucking guy's Matt Cox. He's number one on the Secret Service's most wanted list. And they come and they, they raid me and grab me and throw me in jail, prison. So that's it. 
It's all much longer. Incredible. Yeah. Oh, listen, bro. I've been handcuffed, brought to downtown, questioned, convinced them they had the wrong person. I didn't do anything wrong. They let me go. Were you at a hotel in Nashville whenever you got wrapped up, or were you no, like at an airport was, or something? No. What, I don't, I always no, picture no. when guys let do like what you do, what you did, get arrested. They're always at an airport, walking through with a, a briefcase yeah. full of money and the. No. You just set the briefcase in one spot and walk away intentionally. <laughs> I just I, no. I just pulled up in, in my in my uh, my truck and got on my truck and was walking towards the house and they <laughs> get on the ground get on the ground I was like ah, fuck yeah that's amazing it's interesting would you be interested in uh in coming on my podcast at some point <laughs> i would be yeah, interested whatever that i would be on i was there. gonna say i would be interested but it's not like it's it's uh it's murder related or anything but yeah know, but it'd be fun like you're yeah. you're a fun guy to interact with yeah. so oh listen I, and i have I have stories that are just something, you know, they're yeah. just ridiculously. You were in prison for 13 years. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are. <laughs> hey, what about Zach? I got a buddy, Zach, who is hilarious. Bro, he's, he's, he, he, I love that one. The one story Zach tell my buddy, Zach, uh, he's a, he's a black guy. Oh, fucking hilarious. But he talks like he's a white guy. Six watts. Yeah. He, so he, <laughs> listen, he goes, he goes to, to a, like, a fucking pin yeah like he gets in trouble in prison and ends up going from like a medium to a to a pin he's in the pin he's a member of a gang you know that you that you know you're basically with a car right like you sit with a group of guys and they're all from like florida so he's, he's i'm with the florida car and one day this guy walks in and says uh gathers all their group together he's like they're like there's like 10 of us in a cell and he comes and he's like listen man we going to war bro this dude disrespected me. Uh, we're going to war. Uh, uh, y'all gonna have to get get your knives. You got to uh, like he's like like he's like everybody's like come here tomorrow. We're gonna have our knives. We're gonna this. We're gonna go in. We're gonna and so Zach, you know Zach's a white collar criminal. He's like okay okay. They're all like okay okay. And and, and Zach's like he said like I'm I'm kind of like terrified. He said and all of a sudden he said like we're all we're all like yeah man yeah yeah yeah. And then he, Zach is like Zach goes um excuse me. And the guy's like yeah yeah. What well, what's up man? What's up Zach? He's like yeah um what are we going to war for? And he's, yeah. He said, man, this dude, uh, tried me. He tried my, tried my punk. He tried, or tried my boy. And he goes, your, your boy. Yeah, man, my boy, Jimmy, he tried him, man. He disrespect me. And he goes, well, you, you mean your boyfriend, your, the punk that you were. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, man, he tried him, tried him. And we, we, he, he, just, he can't be doing that. And he goes, and Zach goes, um, yeah, listen, I don't want to go to war over a punk, bro. Like, I make, I get it. He's your boyfriend. Kind of feels like a you problem. I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the other guys are all like, yeah, man, I don't, uh, I don't. Just feel to like be a fly song. on the wall and watch that. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like, yeah, bro, we're not, I'm not doing it. He's like, so everybody like goes like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing this. You're, so you're telling me your boyfriend, somebody tried your boyfriend, somebody, uh, came at your boyfriend like that you know wants to be with your boyfriend and you're pissed about it and you want all of us to go to go up. die yeah. <laughs> get a fuck i end up getting a murder charge like i'm getting out in a couple of years you want yeah. me to get up with a murder charge you know and so he was like yeah. and uh, he said zach said like when we all left guys are going up saying man i'm glad you said something bro like i i, I didn't even think like i thought i didn't even know what was going on i was ready zach was like yeah brother yeah how would they have all reacted if he had just said it was over two magazines that would have been like yeah, they, they, dude, they'd dude been think like, he could st- yeah guy. they'd be like he thinks he could steal from me <laughs> like then they said we probably stabbed him Zach probably would have stabbed him yeah that's different like <laughs> I feel like I don't yeah. know that seems like you something you should take care of dude <laughs> <laughs> listen I've got some horrific what about the what about the other story with the uh, the guy uh, baby <coughs> baby please baby please you know what I'm talking about? I've heard that so many times. This, I can't remember the whole thing. This story. is uh maybe please. J- j- so I'm in the medium, and there's some massive guys in the medium, right? And I'm in the library. So I'm in si- sitting in the library one day, and you know, I'm writing my little my little stories. And you know, there's there's nothing but like a bunch of just, you know, geeky. Like the library's empty in prison. Yeah. Right? In, in in the medium anyway. At the low, it's packed, but in the medium. Not a lot of guys reading. So I'm writing, doing whatever. And there's this gay guy, right? A punk sitting. And the punk's probably a hundred, probably six foot tall, but still probably 120 pounds, you know, with her, with her, you know, legs crossed, flipping through a magazine, 
I mean, yeah. we're talking about thin braids all the way to like, like genuinely would trick you. Oh, you okay. know? so like, like this, yeah. you're like thinking I, yeah. you would, yeah. you know, like. <laughs> so, so you're sitting there. So all of a sudden this guy walks in, this fucking big black guy, six foot two, six three, massive, lives on the rec yard. Comes the punk, with, is he white or black? No, he's black. Okay. It's 80, 80% of the medium's black. Guys. Right. So he comes walking in and he walks up to the punk and he goes, uh, looks around. And when he looks around, everybody there's like, <laughs> looks down. He's like, uh, baby, can I talk to you outside? And she goes, flips the, flips the magazine. Doesn't even look up. Baby. Baby. Baby, can I talk to you outside, please? Baby. Baby. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, the, the punk goes, I don't like the way you talk to me in front of your friends. And he, and he goes, baby, baby, please. Oh, shit. Baby, please. And I, we, listen, everybody in there, humiliated for this guy. And, and he keeps looking, like, we keep looking up. And he keeps looking around, and we're all like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm staring at the ground, but I, I'm so interested in what's happening. Yeah, and I'm sitting there, and he all of a sudden he goes, "Baby, baby, please!" Grabs by the arm, "Baby, can we please don't touch me?" And he goes, "Oh," <laughs> and I, <laughs> "Baby, please, baby, please, can I talk to you outside?" It's like a full on relationship. <laughs> oh, bro, it's it, like a normal relationship. Yes. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I didn't know that happened. I like when you talk to me in front of your friend. Like caveman rules. Oh God, no! Like, <laughs> come here. No. Oh no. Complete respect for uh, you know. Th- listen, this is the closest. This guy's got a life sentence. This is the closest he's ever going to come to a woman. Right. Yeah. And so eventually, <laughs> the punk gets up and walks outside, and then f- five minutes later comes waltzing back inside, sits down, sits down, and the guy comes back in, and we're all looking down, and it's the same thing over again. Baby, please. Baby, can I please don't you outside. Baby, please. I, it, it was the most humiliating thing I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. How do you keep a straight face? I, I'm terrified. This guy's six That's foot. Fuck, what am I going to do? Ha <laughs> ha. Bro, your girl. Fuck. <laughs> he's got a life. He's already got life. The shit like that in boot camp where you, you like, you want to laugh so much, but you, yeah. you got to keep a straight <laughs> face. Yeah. I could, same thing. I can relate to that. What about you? You're Mormon. He is more. <laughs> what does that have to just, do with anything? I don't know. I'm sure they've seen some shit. <laughs> but y'all sacrifice babies on like crosses oh, or something? On Thursdays, and I wasn't there on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> I had to work on Thursdays. I was never there. Stuff. 1159 Media is kind of like a Mormon company. The the owner, Sam, he's, he's Mormon. Chase is Mormon. I don't know what I am, but I'm not Mormon yet. Not yet. You got more pamphlets handed you. He's ex Mormon. He's not Mormon anymore. It's, it's a long con. We're doing the long time. Yeah. You should talk to him afterwards. <laughs> All right. This yeah. is going nowhere. Are you ready? <laughs> Are we wrapping this up? Oh, you guys want to talk about anything else? I'm I'm good. We actually got a we've got a meetup going on here pretty soon. So we're gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go shower and everything. And we're having listeners come and we sold out the uh smoky bones barbecue house. So Are you serious? Over 17 You seasons. guys are <laughs> you guys are killing it. Nobody's done that since Zeppelin. So we sold out. Led Zeppelin was a a group. I'll I'll tell you later. (laughs) Real quick, uh, where can people go to find you? Yeah, you go first. So 1159media.com or 1159plus.com will take you to both of our podcasts as well as our other podcasts Mm -hmm. that we have available. Well, we we actually have uh, like there's like a description box, and so we can also put the links. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can search uh, True Crime Kent at Spotify. It's everywhere. iTunes, all that shit. And Do you know how many times you straighten it and does this? It goes right yeah. back. I yeah. don't know why. I'm like, is he not noticing that you yeah. can tighten it? I think it's is like a nervous not- thing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I do that at, in my own booth all the time, too, because I've got this same. But uh, yeah, True Crime Kent, Spotify, iTunes, all the stuff. It's You can find it anywhere podcasts are. And this has been awesome, dude. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> Like I, I wasn't, I didn't, I was telling him on our way in, like, cause it all happened so fast. Like, I didn't know if I was going to get to do a podcast episode or if I was going to end up in a bathtub full of ice missing my spleen, but it was going to be one or the other. And I was down for either or. So I'm really happy that this is what it turned out being. <laughs> this is so much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, I know I don't talk a lot, but that's kind of my role is... I'm usually, I just slipped back into editor mode where I'm just 
taking mental notes. Oh, I gotta take that out. I gotta take yeah, that yeah. Out. I gotta take that out. So, sometimes I'll be doing the at awesome. the show and I'll look down because he he sits in on all the shows and I'll be rambling on about something. It's usually sexual, and Chase is just <laughs> writing time stamps. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do me a favor. If you like the video, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified of videos just like this. Leave me a comment in the comment section. I try and respond to as many as possible. Also, we're going to leave all the links in the description box. And cons please consider joining my Patreon. Thank you very much. See ya.